blood and uh, so we don't think of water in the river as say you would but it's been so much of our lives here she didn't build that bridge till I was 30 years old I know. The, bridge. the bridge that well that uh, took away the uh, the need for a boat with the coming of the bridge. And for a year before they finished the bridge, people were still working on the beams, were walking on the beams to get over here. The best uh, customers the Indians had at that time period I'm talking about, I don't know how, mu how much effect it had at, at, at the other two reservations, but uh, they used to be gypsies, but uh, they were the best, among the best customers that the Indians had. Okay. You know, they, they were gypsies. They belonged to the gypsy bands. And I mean, they had quite a reputation, but they never applied that on the reservation. They never tried to beat Indians down or uh, give them their price. Yeah. They were buying the baskets from the people here and going out and selling them. And they never argued price. Some people were fancy basket makers, and they, they required a, a stick of ash that was workable for them, which means you could draw them out fine enough for their, for their work. And then some were concentrating on the, what they call market baskets. That's pack baskets and shopping baskets and those kinds of things. And that was a big thing then when I when I was growing up. But, you know, we didn't we didn't know the word prejudice. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't know uh, that word. It didn't exist. We just knew that uh, people in the town kind of treated us in a, a strange way. Uh, they looked at us in a very mean. <laughs> Uh, way with their eyes and talk to us really only when they had to. The culture was brought back uh, during the time when uh, there was a problem out in the West where the, the um, oh, what's it called? Uh, wounded knee. That wounded knee. And some of our people went out there, the young, young people, and uh, they learned some of the tradition. So then when they came back here, they they thought, well, let's find out. They want to know about the traditions of our tribe. So I guess they, uh, they were able to get some uh, n knowledge of how our tribes, uh, what, what they did, how they lived, and so forth. So then they started to try to live that way. Then now when I came home, I had to learn something about my people. So I studied everything that I could get my hands on about about my people, the Penobscots. And then I went around to the powwows at uh, all the other tribes, the Micmac, Maliseet, and Passamaquoddy. And uh, so I, was le I learned an awful lot about the tribes, the traditions they have, and, uh, and uh, the ceremonies that they conduct. And uh, that's where I, uh, I start learning. So I, I, I was very interested. Uh, there I could find out a lot of things about my tribe, a lot of things about the other tribes also, and uh, customs and the traditions. Uh, language was a little hard, it was hard. I couldn't quite grasp that. Of course, there wasn't anybody teaching it as well, except what you could read in books and so on. So I didn't learn, I learned the language. and. Uh, 
I'm sorry I didn't, but that's how it, how it went. There's no bridge there. We uh, cross over by canoe uh, and, and or the, um, the, they had uh, taken a, they call it a, uh, the ferry boat. Everybody didn't have a canoe. Uh, some people had a canoe, others didn't. So we, we had to rely upon the uh, ferry boat to get over to Old Town and back. And uh, that, that, that was good because it was only two cents, two cents over, two cents back. And uh, tourists paid five cents over, five cents back. Yeah. In the winter, they had the, uh, they didn't have the ferry boat, but they had the uh, sawdust bridge. Sawdust would insulate the ice all the way across, and uh, even trucks, cars, uh, everything came back, came across on the, on the uh, Sawdust Bridge. I was born here in 1925, and I'll be 82 in July. And I grew up here with a lot of good, happy days, but in dire poverty. We lived in um, homes and not houses. So that's what makes my uh, remembrance of the past. Everybody loved and helped everybody else. We lived in a very small village. Now it's expanded to the point where I don't even recognize anybody. And the unfortunate thing is as a result of that, part of our culture is starting to disappear in many areas. Nowadays, nobody visits anybody. Everybody is on their own. And that there, TV, that's what spoiled our language. That's all you ever hear. But years ago, everybody visited everybody. And you walk into anybody's house, no matter what they had, they shared it. If they're having dinner, you don't knock on the door. You walk in and just sit down and eat. Those are the kind of things you miss. Uh, not that I'm hungry all the time, but nevertheless, it's the idea, the kind of companionship that everybody had. My love is the other one is making sure, reviving the Indian ceremonial day each year. It's been going on for over 40 years. And the first time I retired from that was last year. I think basically to make the children growing up and other people to understand who we are in a positive sense and not negative. We've been written so negatively in the past. Uh, when I first started out, it was difficult. Nobody wanted to dance. Nobody wanted to put the regalia on. Now it's one of the biggest events. It took 40 years to tell them how proud they should be, why they should be, tell them the stories. And they're proud now. Before there was such an inferiority complex. Like I say, when they went to school, we were kind of looked down upon, but well, we're living in shacks. We've done something to generate interest on doing my part to encourage the young people to go to school for their education, which I never had the opportunity to do. And in the process, make sure you never forget who you really are. Doesn't make any difference who.